If you're coming back to sports card investing and collecting from the 90s or early 2000s, welcome back. A lot has changed. Besides the prices going through the roof, besides this panini prism stuff, besides all the grading, the way we buy sports cards has changed completely. The internet has allowed sports cards to change ownership, change hands way quicker than anything we had back in the day. So in this video, I'll share with you the three platforms I use to buy cards, their advantages, disadvantages, and the ways to utilize them to make sure you get the best deals possible. Plus at the end, I'll also share with you where I go to sell cards because I hate paying fees and there's a lot of them in this industry. Let's start with the gimme, eBay. eBay is like the shit show of the internet. There are investors, collectors, auctions, buy it now, accepts offers, scam artists. There's anything and everything is on eBay, but it's truly the standard because there are so many buyers and sellers that it accurately shows market value. Now, if you use another platform that was only for investors, you wouldn't really get market value because we need to see what everyone is willing to pay for a card at a given amount of time. Even websites like PWCC use eBay sold data to help determine what you should sell your cards for. Jeff of Sports Card Investor, his market mover tool, which he's put together, analyzes eBay sales. So eBay, because it's the largest pool of buyers and sellers, that is going to be the best source of data. Now, as a buyer, I don't like eBay for several reasons. Number one is you're paying for shipping, which could be built into the price, it could not be, but regardless, you need to receive the card. Number two, you're paying taxes. Unless you have a business registration and you have a sales tax exemption certificate, you are paying seven to 10% in tax. And here in LA, it's 9.5%. So that really digs into the your profit margin when you're paying an additional 10% off the bat. But there are definitely some perks to eBay. Everyone knows eBay, everyone trusts eBay. It was there for the last 30 years or so, ever since the internet came about. So you have all people that are on eBay and are connected to PayPal. It's not like you have to sell through this little underground form that only savvy investors know about. An alternative to eBay is COMC, which I use a lot and I talk a lot about in this channel. It is amazing and to me it's the future of sports card investing because it's a giant warehouse, a giant headquarters that holds millions and millions of cards. So you could literally send your cards there in bulk, sell them, and then when someone else buys the cards, they don't have to receive them if they don't want to. They can relist them, they can uh, all receive them at once, but it's not like this pay $3 shipping here, pay tax. Plus, yeah, they don't charge tax, which is even better, and it's only a 5% fee when you sell versus 10%, which is on eBay. Now, one of the caveats with COMC is that when you put money on COMC, you sell cards, and you wanna retrieve your money, you wanna cash out, they charge 10%. But in another video, I'll explain how I'm not gonna pay that. I can work around that system. Regardless, COMC, eliminates a lot of the pain points that collectors and investors have, mostly with taxes, shipping, and just disorganization. The last platform is Beckett Marketplace, and this is not a very nice website. In fact, the layout is so antiquated, I feel like it's going to the library to find healthy recipes in 2020. You don't do it. You go online, you find something easy, you watch a YouTube video, the Beckham Marketplace is like going back in time. You look up cards and there's no pictures, it's just a little description. Uh, it just seems so outdated and horrible in a way, but because of that, there's opportunities that are there just left open because other people don't wanna use time to dig through all the crap and, and to go through this painful process. So there's definitely opportunities there if you have the patience. One thing I really like about Beckett is that they don't charge tax and a lot of the card shops that they're partnered with on their site have free shipping offers over $25 or 40 or over 50 bucks. So again, when you're buying these small cards, these lower end cards, to avoid shipping and avoid taxes, that is a big deal. Now those are the three major platforms, but let's dive a bit deeper into how to find the best deals on all of them. So on eBay, I told you, it's a shit show. There's 
buyers selling all sorts of crazy things. There's scam artists, there's good pictures, there's bad pictures, there's whatever. But what I like about eBay is that it's one of the few places where you can post lots. As in, I have a 50 card lot of Kobe Bryant. And because it could be just a collector that's posting it and collectors looking at it, they might not know the value. But as an investor, if you can look through the pictures, see the conditions of the cards, and then do your own math in terms of, okay, there's eight rookie cards here, there's five inserts, and I can estimate what I could sell this all for is 500 bucks, then you can quickly put an offer in of 300 and see if it's accepted. Because of the lots, you really have this unique opportunity to find some gold where other people don't have either the knowledge of the card values or they don't have the patience to sort through and do the math in their own head as to what they can get from it. The other opportunity of eBay is high supply times. Remember, when you are investing in cards, it comes down to supply and demand. When there's a lot of demand and very little supply, you can get a lot of money for your cards. When there's very high supply and low demand, you're gonna get very little. So when you see that your favorite player or your one of your target cards, there's 18 listings, that's a good time to buy because you'll see that, hey, this is a high supply period. Even if the demand is decent, if there are 18 listings for the same card, then you know that the price is not gonna be that high. So when you get that card, you could wait for a period when there's not many listings, you could sell it and get a profit just because people have to bid up on one of the few listings available. So always make sure to look out for lots and high supply times. All right, let's move on to COMC. And there's a lot of ways of finding deals on COMC and taking action quickly because it is such a liquid and fluid uh, platform. So one great thing about COMC is the organization. It is so easy to find cards and to sort by deals. So I'll look up at the top, I will sort by recently posted sales, I'll take a look at the sellers, see exactly what they're selling, what kind of prices they're posting. I, I can look on PWCC and see what those have sold for recently to see if they're really a good deal or if it just appears to be a good deal. I will look at some of my top sellers or favorite sellers, see what deals they're offering or cards they're offering. And I feel like it's just a great place to find cards on sale and just make sure that you are confirming with other websites like eBay sold sales or PWCC to make sure that the deals are actually as good as posted. Because if they're just marking up the price 3X and then taking off 50%, it might appear like a deal, but that doesn't mean that it's actually a good deal. You could also look at the sales history and to see what that card has sold for in the last couple of years, as well as the volume. So it's a lot of data, a lot of organization, and as a Virgo, it is the best way to find deals in my opinion. And lastly, Beckett Marketplace is great when there is a surge on one specific player. For example, let's take Jared Stidham. When Tom Brady all of a sudden left New England, the next, the backup quarterback was Jared Stidham. And all of a sudden his prices skyrocketed because People assumed, hey, Jared Stidham is going to be the starter quarterback. They let Tom Brady go in free agency. He becomes a Buccaneer. So let's all buy Jared Stidham cards. Now, eBay, people are on that real quick. COMC, people are on that within an hour or two, very quick. But Beckett Marketplace is the last place people go to because it's so hard to navigate and it's antiquated and the owners of these shops have to go in and manually do it. I feel like that is the place where you wanna go when there is a surge on a player. So when you hear a player gets traded or there's some reason for that player to get a lot more value from their cards, it might be too late after an hour or two on both COMC and on uh, eBay, but Beckham Marketplace, if you search those rookie cards there or those special cards, whatever it is there, you might find that the prices have not been updated yet. And that is when you want to go in, you want to make sure you get that free shipping by paying 25 or 40 bucks and put that order in ASAP before they can change the price. Now, those were the three platforms I use and the ways I find deals. I'll do more detailed videos going into each of them in the future. But in terms of selling, face-to-face -face or Facebook groups are the best because you do not want to pay all of these seller fees that eBay charges. It really cuts in. If you can do that, that is my go-to. I'm running out of time here on the camera, so I got to let you go. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my station, and I will see you next time.